In this video, we're going to see how to use Euler's method to numerically solve a first order differential equation. This one happens to be linear, um, and we know that with most linear differential equations, we can find the solution with that methodology analytically. Um, but uh, Euler's method would work for any first order differential equation where you can solve for the derivative. So let's take a look at how that works. The first step is to solve for the derivative. And so if you have a differential equation like this where you don't already have y prime isolated, uh, you'd want to get it by itself first. So let's subtract 3y from both sides. And that will put it in the correct format. So the derivative will be denoted by f from here on out. So f is a function of two variables. And it's 7e to the 4x minus 3y. We can uh, actually set up what all our x values are because we have our starting x value, 0, and uh, it starts off as x sub 0, the index starts at 0, uh, with your initial condition, and then you just add the step size to get to the next point. So uh, step size in this problem is 0.05, so that means x1 is 0.05, and x2 is 0.1. And you would continue this until you made it as far as you wanted to go. Well, we're just going to do this twice to see how this works. Huh. Yeah. And uh, then turn over to technology to do it uh, for larger numbers of times. So those are our x values. The question is, what are the y values? Well, we, we know y is 0, y is 0 is 2, um, but figuring out y1 and y2 will use the formula. This formula actually comes from the tangent line. So we know the initial condition, and that means x0, y0 is correct, but we don't know this blue line. We don't know where the function actually is, so we take the derivative at that point, and we move along in that direction as if it were a tangent line. And to find out how much y goes up or down, just take the slope of that tangent line, which is the derivative, and multiply by h. All right. So since the slope is rise over run, the rise is the slope times the run. And that's what this formula is here. The change in y is the change in x h times the slope, which is f, because f is the derivative, right? OK, so our first y value is 2, and h is 0 0.05, and the derivative is this function here. And we're going to use the derivative at the start, which is where x is 0 and y is 2. So we're just using x0, y0 for x and y. So simplifying this, um, we're going to have 2 plus 0.05 times 7 minus 6, which is 2.05. Now we have x1 and y1, and we can repeat the process to move further. So for instance, getting y2 We'll take our y1, 2.05, and we will add 
h times the derivative. Now we're not going to use 0 and 2 for x and y this time. We're using x1, y1. So we need to use the next x value of 0 0.05 and the y value that we just found, 2.05. So simplifying that. Are you there? Are you there? Okay. So I had to take a quick break, but uh, just noticed a quick typo here. It should be 0 0.05, and the seven should be in parentheses. And so we're just simplifying that. with 2.16990965. And we could repeat this as many times as we want. We do have y3 here, so let's just show it one more time. So for the next step, we take the previous y value And we add the change in y, which is the product of the step size and the derivative. And this time we're using the derivative at x2, y2. So x2 is 0.1, and y2 is. 2.16999. So you can only go so far here with having, without having to deal with uh, rounded numbers, which is why it's nice to have the computer do this for you. And if we simplify all that, uh, we get 2.36663095. So let's organize this in a table. We know our x values. y values but we need the exact solution to determine the error so sometimes we are able to solve the differential equation exactly and we're just using the numerical method as a way to test how it works like now other times you don't have the exact solution and we'll see in the next examples how you can deal with that. But we do have an exact solution. The exact solution is given in the book for this one. But we are just doing this problem here. So the exact solution is e to the 4x plus e to the negative 3x. And you can, of course, determine that because this is a linear first order differential equation. So you can go through the work to find that. e to the 4x plus e to the negative 3x.
So given this exact solution, we're just going to put in the different x values uh, and figure out what the y values are. So replace x with 0 0.05. I get 2.08211015. And then you just subtract these numbers to find the error. Take the exact minus the approximate. Typically, you just look at the positive, you know, the absolute value of the difference. Go ahead and subtract 2.05. So we'll do that for the other values. So replacing x with 0 0.1, I get this. And it's often that you will see the errors accumulating as you move along rather than canceling out. So the error is going to increase. Uh, a certain amount of error for each step that will add up to a global error at the end. And for the last exact value, just replacing x with 0 0.15 in the formula. Now, if we make the step size smaller, we are going to get smaller error. Of course, it's still going to accumulate a little more, um, but that is a way to reduce the global error. For the Euler's method, the error is of order h. Uh, sometimes you'll say it's first order. And what this means is that if you were to um, half the step size, you would half the error, which sounds really nice. We'll in fact get even better results with the other methods so that we can half the error and maybe get one-fourth or one-sixteenth of the error. So stay tuned for using the other methods. Um, but ultimately, we want to implement this numerically. And so let's look at doing this in Sage. Uh, in the E5 folder, right? we have the numerical methods with Sage file that's linked there. So open that up. And the first little set of code is what you want to use for the analysis of Euler's method and for the first assignment in your lab of this experience. So I'm going to go ahead and get a graph of the exact solution. So we can put in that equation here. We had e to the 4x and e to the negative 3x. So we'll check that. E to the 4x plus e to the negative 3x. Okay? And then we need the derivative function that we use. So is this 7e to the 4x minus 3y?
And then we need our initial conditions, which are 0 and 2. Yep. And then you can put in your step size and tell it to run Euler's method for you. It should give you a graph of the exact and approximate solutions. Like I said, to change the area we're looking at. So we're looking from 0 to 1. And maybe from 1 to 3. or 1.5 to 2.5. So playing around with these windows a little to give us a better view of this thing. I think we're going out too far. Let's try just going to 0 0.2. OK, just messing around with some of the settings for the plot window here. Uh, and uh, what's happening is the exact solution is exponentially growing. And so that's causing it to kind of jump up vertically pretty high. So one way to get a decent picture of it I found was to really limit the x. So just going from 0 to 0 0.5 and then to limit the number of steps in the method to 5. So then it's also going, they're both going to about a quarter there. And so you can see in red is the approximate solution, and in blue is the exact solution. And those are pretty close. Right? And you want to make them closer, you can do that, right? So you know, if you make the step size 10 times smaller, you're going to have to do 50, 10 times as many steps. But then you can almost not even tell the difference there. So the graph will show both the exact and approximate solutions, and you'll get a list of all the values. Each one of these ordered pair for the approximate solution it gives you x and y, from the initial condition up to wherever you want to stop. So that's a good analysis of Euler's method, and we'll show next how to use the improved Euler and the Runge-Kutta methods.